Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, an African tale by John Steptoe. Beautiful Niasha, she is not only lovely to look at, but generous and kind as well. Niasha would make a perfect wife for the great king. But Niasha's sister, Manyara, is jealous. She feels that she should be chosen by the king. As the two sisters travel to the king's city, strange adventures befall them. Which sister will become queen of the land? <laughs> Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters was inspired by a folk tale collected by G. M. Thiel and published in 1895 in his book Kafir Folklore. Details of the illustrations were inspired by the ruins of an ancient city found in Zimbabwe and the flora and fauna of that region. The names of the characters are from the Shona language. Mufaro means happy man, Niasha means mercy, Manyara means ashamed, and Nioka means snake. The author wishes to thank Nyamani Mutima and Ona Kwanele of the Afro-American Institute and Jill Penfold of the Zimbabwe Mission for their helpful assistance in the research of this book. This book is dedicated to the children of South Africa. A long time ago, in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and half a day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaro lived in this village with his two daughters who were called Manyara and Niasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Niasha were very beautiful. Manyara was almost always in a bad temper. She teased her sister whenever their father's back was turned and she had been heard to say Someday, Nyasha, I will be a queen and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Nyasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are and they praise everything you do, Manyara replied. I'm certain that father loves you best, but when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. Nyasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. Nyasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflowers, yams and vegetables. She always sang as she worked and some said it was her singing that made her crops more bountiful than anyone else's. One day Niasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nioka, she called to him. You are welcome here. You will keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward, gave the little snake a loving pat on the head and then returned to her work. From that day on, Nioka was always at Niasha's side when she tended her garden. It was said that she sang all the more sweetly when he was there.
Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Nyasha was too considerate of her father's feelings to complain and Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufaro was around. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters in the land are invited to appear before the king and he will choose one to become queen, the messenger proclaimed. Mufaro called Manyara and Nyasha to him. It would be a great honour to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call together all our friends to make a wedding party. We will leave tomorrow as the sun rises. But my father, Manyara said sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you, even to be wife to the king. I know Nyasha would grieve to death if she were parted from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Nyasha be happy here with you. Mufaro beamed with pride. The king has asked for the most worthy and the most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. That night, when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before and she was frightened. But her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. In her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared standing in the path. Please, said the boy, I am hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I have brought only enough for myself, Manyara replied. But please, said the boy, I am so very hungry. Out of my way, boy! Tomorrow I will become your queen. How dare you stand in my path? After travelling for what seemed to be a great distance, Manyara came to a small clearing. There, silhouetted against the moonlight, was an old woman seated on a large stone. The old woman spoke. I will give you some advice, Manyara. Soon after you pass the place where the two paths cross, you will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you. You must not laugh in return. Later, you will meet a man with his head under his arm. You must be polite to him. How do you know my name? How dare you advise your future queen? Stand aside, you ugly woman! Manyara scolded and then rushed on her way without looking back. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. I must be calm, Manyara thought. I will not be frightened. She looked up at the trees and laughed out loud. <laughs> I laugh at you trees, she shouted and she hurried on. It was not yet dawn when Manyara heard the sound of rushing water. The river must be up ahead, she thought. The great city is just on the other side. But there, on the rise, she saw a man with his head tucked under his arm. Manyara ran past him without speaking. A queen acknowledges only those who please her, she said to herself. I will be queen. I will be queen, she chanted as she hurried on towards the city. Nyasha woke at the first light of dawn. As she put on her finest garments, she thought how her life might be changed forever beyond this day. 
I'd much prefer to live here, she admitted to herself. I'd hate to leave this village and never see my father or sing to little Nyoka again. Her thoughts were interrupted by loud shouts and a commotion from the wedding party assembled outside. My Nyara was missing. Everyone bustled about, searching and calling for her. When they found her footprints on the path that led to the city, they decided to go on as planned. As the wedding party moved through the forest, brightly plumed birds darted about in the cool green shadows beneath the trees. Though anxious about her sister, Nyasha was soon filled with excitement about all there was to see. They were deep in the forest when they saw the small boy standing on the side of the path. You must be hungry, she said, and handed him a yam she had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared as quietly as he had come. Later, as they were approaching the place where the two paths crossed, the old woman appeared and silently pointed the way to the city. Nyasha thanked her and gave her a small pouch filled with sunflower seeds. The sun was high in the sky when the party came to the grove of towering trees. Their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Nyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, someone announced that they were near their destination. Nyasha ran ahead and topped the rise before the others could catch up with her. She stood transfixed at her first sight of the city. Oh, my father, she called, a great spirit must stand guard here. Just look at what lies before us. I never in all my life dreamed there could be anything so beautiful. Arm in arm, Nyasha and her father descended the hill, crossed the river and approached the city gate. Just as they entered through the great doors, the air was rent by piercing cries and Manyara ran wildly out of a chamber at the centre of the enclosure. When she saw Nyasha, she fell upon her sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister! Oh, please, father, do not let her go, she cried hysterically. There's a great monster there, a snake with five heads. He said that he knew all my faults and that I displeased him. He would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, my sister, please do not go inside that place. It frightened Nyasha to see her sister so upset. But leaving her father to comfort Manyara, she bravely made her way to the chamber and opened the door. On the seat of the great chief's stool lay the little garden snake. Nyasha laughed with, re laughed. Nyasha laughed with relief and joy. My little friend, she exclaimed, it's such a pleasure to see you, but why are you here? I am the king, Nioka replied, and there, before Nyasha's eyes, the garden snake changed shape. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy with whom you shared a yam in the forest and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best as Nyoka because I have been all of these. I know you to be the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. And so it was that a long time ago, Nyasha agreed to be married. The king's mother and sisters took Nyasha to their house and the wedding preparations began. The 
best weavers in the land laid out their finest cloth for their wedding garments. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration and a great feast was held. Niasha prepared the bread for the wedding feast from millet that had been brought from her village. Mufaro proclaimed to all who would hear him that he was the happiest father in all the land for he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters. Niasha, the queen, and Manyara, a servant in the queen's household. <laughs>